So I have been excited for a while about an anime that was coming out this winter season. A new anime, or maybe not so new. It's a new twist on an existing anime, but I really couldn't wait to see Trigun Stampede. And unlike the other shows I've watched, I'm not going to do reactions to every episode, and I'm not going to do, like, solo reviews by myself. I want to talk about it with my friends. You know, I've done a few shows that I talk about with my family. Well, this is one I want to talk about with my friends. So I'm bringing the only friends I know that I can talk to about anime into the YouTube channel here for this video. And starting off in no particular order, just starting on my right, going to my left based on what I see when I look at the computer screen, Chris from Canada, how's it going? It's going great. I'm all excited. I'm on camera. I'm like, <laughs> I should have made sure I did my hair and makeup before I got on, but uh, hopefully yeah. I'm uh, not too uh, camera destroying. <laughs> what do they call YouTube in Canada? Uh, tube U. Oh, nice. I've never been in Canadian Tube U. And then, of course, joining me, a person that many folks know as Secular Man. I know him as Secular Man, but his mother named him Matthew. Hey, Matthew, how's it going? I can't really prove it was my mother, but yes, that is my name. And things are going great. I had a good day with friends, and this is making it even better. Well, wonderful, because I had kind of a crazy day, and this is my way to sort of like decompress and relax a little bit. Sure. And, you know, with Trigun Stampede being, I, I think the only term that I feel right using is a reboot from previous Trigun, it's worth talking about our experience with Trigun. And I think I'm somewhere in the middle between you guys. I mean, I've read some of the manga. I watched Trigun, but... It was at a time when I wasn't watching any anime, so it was like the only anime I really had much experience with for a long time. And I did a whole episode of my old podcast, Heroes and Villains, just about Vash the Stampede. So personally, I feel like I know Vash a little bit more than I actually know Trigun the story. And then I think moving on to the person among the three of us who I consider to be the diehard fan, the guy who is goes hardest in the paint when it comes to Trigun, and that's Matthew. So Matthew, can you just uh, tell us a few, you know, a few bullet points, a few sentences about Trigun and you? Hmm. Trigun was either the second or third anime I truly fell in love with. And Vash may actually be my favorite fictional character of all time. Oh, wow. That is strong work. I mean, even better than Mary Poppins. Even, even just a spoonful of Vash helps anything go down. Wow, that's high praise. Wow. You prefer Vash the Stampede to say uh, Light from Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> Incomparable. So, Chris, where do you stand with Trigun and Vash? Oh, the anime is a classic. Um, I, yeah, I've seen it twice now. I think I've done, I, yeah, I did, yeah, one watch through. The Just, uh, I did that, what did it say? Maybe like uh, eight months ago or so I did a watch through. Just because it's one of those ones that you can keep going back to. Um, that's It's a classic. You know, Vash is one of the uh, all-time classic characters. Uh, quirky is, uh, you know, he's he's got some quirks, but he's also, uh, you know, pretty deadly and all that other stuff, right? <laughs> well. Well, I think when we're talking about a, a reboot or a reimagining or a retelling of the story, you can't help but compare... Trigun Stampede to the original. So we're going to be doing a lot of comparing some things to the original in this first episode review. Then I think we'll get that out of our system. We'll move on with the story that this new show is giving us. But first off, can you guys believe it's been 25 years since Trigun debuted in its original form, the anime? I can. Believe it or not, I lived through that time. <laughs> I did too. I mean, I feel old and I know I'm old, but 25 years ago, Trigun came out old. That's really old. It's uh, it's hard to believe, but you know what? Like, because time flow, and I think ever since uh, what we went through the last couple of years, like time is really like it's all over. Like, who knows? I don't. Even, what day is it? Is it Tuesday? It might be Tuesday. I don't know. I think it's twenty twenty three. It could be twenty seventeen. I don't know. I've lost all track of time. That said, um, you know the the way that you can always tell, at least for anime, when it was made is you look at it. And then it's pretty obvious by the animation styles for the most part when it was done. So when you look at it, but I, you know what? I promised that I wasn't going to, you know, downplay animation. So I'm just going to say it has great animation, the original. Yes. 
<laughs> you know, there's nothing like that late nineties madhouse look, man. I, I mean, there's something True. about it that works, but I did go back and rewatch the first episode of the classic Trigun just because as I was watching this first episode of the new one, I started to think maybe I was not remembering the old one properly because there were a lot of things that jumped out to me right up front. So I had to go back and rewatch it. No, I did remember it appropriately, but I think the first question I'm going to pose for you two guys is, uh, and I'll start with you, Matthew, because I know you're not as much a fan of the CGI animation as some people are. But was the CGI animation okay with you in this first episode of Trigun Stampede? Some of the best CGI animation I've seen for television, especially. I absolutely agree. I know, I think I saw one uh, person, a YouTube review that said they thought it looked a little rubbery, but I thought it looked pretty natural. I mean, I thought it looked great. How about yeah. you, Chris? How did the CGI animation sit with you? Well, you know what? For CGI, um, usually in a like, there's been some really bad ones. And we talked like, what was it? Like Tesla Note. That was one that they did. That was awful. There was uh, another one I watched called X-Arm. That was pretty bad, like pretty bad. Uh, Tesla Note was worse. But, you know, so sometimes they can get it wrong. I can't really fault uh, the CG on it. Um I mean, I prefer, you know, standard, you know, good old 2D animation, uh, but I can't really say it was bad. Like, it wasn't bad. I just prefer, obviously, the style of the original. There, there you go. Yeah. See, I didn't I didn't slam it. I didn't totally it. get it. When you put it on style instead of quality, that's a free out. Like, nobody can say, <laughs> like, there's no accounting for taste. Nobody can say that you don't like that flavor better than that flavor. So that's good, man. It's a good way to, to put it across. Um you know, I think CGI animation, CG animation is really growing on me. I really like the uh, Dragon Ball Z super superhero movie, which had a lot of CGI in it. Mm -hmm. I think they use uh, Ufotable, I think, uses CGI wonderfully with some of their Demon Slayer stuff. So I like it. It gives it a little extra level of oomph to it. So I like the CGI animation still. Uh, you know, I don't know how much is nostalgia and how much is taste, but I still do prefer uh, the animation in the previous one. And it's not just the animation. I think some of it really is the style. So we'll kind of get on with that. But this one, I'm going to direct this question again, a little bit more towards you to begin with, Matt. But Trigun Stampede opens on a spaceship. I mean, it just straight up yep. opens on a spaceship. Yep. And it really throws you into knowing you're in the middle of a space opera, sci-fi kind of thing. Yep. Whereas the old one started in a saloon and it really felt more like I'm in a Western and they played the sci-fi aspect of mystery that sort of unfolded. But here, they're just getting it out of the way up front. What do you think about that? Yes, uh, this has been uh, considered by many people to be a bad idea. Uh, but I think it's all, it's, on one side, I miss the fact that they're not letting it reveal itself as time goes on. But it's kind of nice to get it out of the way as well. It's... I still have kind of mixed feelings about the whole thing, but I'm, I'm a little more, I'm happier with it than a lot of folks that I've heard. What about you, Chris? How do you feel about like just starting off letting us know this is a story that takes place in space rather than the mystery, which that first one kind of had unfold? Um, I'm kind of in the same camp. Um, you know, like me, I love that period of time when we had so many of those, like, they're space westerns, but they're more western than space, right? Right. And that's one of those, you know, like I go back to like Gun Sword, same kind of thing. Um, you know, that's a little bit late, a couple of years after, but it was the the like the source materials from around the same time, you know, where it's it plays up that western feel. And so you know that you're in a Western. It just happens to be in space. Yeah, just like Cowboy Bebop. It's got Cowboy it, right in the name. It, it got that space Western. Right. You know, it just, it's like, it. whereas I think with this one starting in space, you're making it more of a space opera and not a space Western. And I and I just, that's kind of the feeling I got, you know, knowing, watching, have, having watched the first one and going to this one, I love, I just, I like that you're playing up the Western part. And not as much the space part because, like in the original one, the like the the, the gunfights and all of that stuff and the traveling across the desert and yeah. you know <laughs> like that's that's the main focus. They just happen to go from planet to planet, doing it right. So 
And you know, like you said, this feels more like a space opera than a Western. Even the the landscape, and maybe it's because of where my mindset was, seeing the spaceships and the, the escape pod get sent out and the spaceships cr- uh, blow up up in space and everything. Yeah. But I thought that their landscape looks more Tatooine than it does like Utah or Death Valley. Like when I go back and watch the old one, I feel like they're hanging out in Death Valley. And it's like Death Valley Days, the old TV show. But here, oh, yeah. suddenly I feel like I'm watching The Mandalorian and they're on Tatooine and it feels more like space, more like Dune even. You know, like I have a lot of thoughts like Dune when they go to the plant. Um, so I definitely am feeling more space opera than space Western. Not, that's a bad thing. Once again, just style. If you're a space Western person, you're definitely going to like that that original one better, at least from what I'm seeing in this pilot, in my opinion. It's always been... I think it's always it's always been kind of a, a mix, uh, western, space opera, a little bit of a steampunk. Oh yeah, definitely with the gun design for sure. The Yasuhiro Hero um, Naito is definitely a fan of multiple genres. <laughs> and uh, another thought I had too is with this being a reboot or a retelling, then a lot of people who are watching this are already going to have seen the original. They're already going to yeah. be fans of the original. So what's the point of having a mystery? You know, it, it's like mysteries yeah. don't work in a reboot if you already know where it's going. So just get that out in the open and let's explore it in a whole different fashion, explore yeah. different concepts, go a little more blade runner with it or something. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think I really think this show was really was made more for the fans of the older stuff than general audiences. Now here is the, the 60 billion double dollar question. What do you think of Vash's character design here? Because and I'm talking about design, not animation, but the design, because this was tough for me to deal with because I love the 1998 Madhouse Vash with the spiky hair and he's tall and lanky and he just has almost just a touch of an inhuman look at his long arms and legs, you know, and it worked <laughs> for that character. Kind of remind me sometimes a little bit of like Warlock from the New Mutants in Marvel, the, the lankiness and everything. What do you guys think of the hair that looks more humanly attainable <laughs> than the spike <laughs> on top of the original Bash's head? No, I like the original way better. <laughs> like I just, I do, I do. I, How about you know, you, you know, How about I just, you, Matthew? it's just so much better. The original. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a classic look, but this one, this one has already grown on me over the four times I've watched this episode. Yeah. I think it'll be one of those things where familiarity helps you accept it more. It's just, yeah. I love that the the lunatic that is the human typhoon, well, he kind of needs that ridiculous hair that a human shouldn't be able to have. You know what I mean? Like the floppy. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw one online reviewer say he looked more like an Instagram influencer than a human typhoon. So I wish yeah. he was a little uglier or something. He, and I like a, the old glasses better than these new ones. He supposedly looks like some rapper whose name I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I'll have to look into that. I was thinking uh, maybe more Justin Bieber, but I'm sure. Is it Drake? <laughs> it's no? Definitely not Drake. Um, <laughs> probably Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, how about. Um, I think that was it. Yes, how probably about, Machine Gun Kelly. Is it um, Two Chains? I, I, oh, no, no, no. I like no? Two Chains. It's um, uh, <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Riff Raff. That was it, Riff Raff. Okay, so I got another question for you guys. We, what do you have on this version of Meryl Strife, your thoughts on Meryl, who, instead of being an insurance adjuster or an insurance investigator, suddenly it's a whole different ball game when she wants to be a, an investigative journalist. I feel like that's trying to make it a little more mainstream, and also it gets us a little bit away. Like, the insurance adjuster really felt like something that would happen in 1899 in Nevada, yeah. you know, and... and the journalist doesn't seem like something that would happen in Death Valley. You don't you don't sell a whole lot of newspapers in a town of twelve people. I I just we'll see that. Yeah, I think it's a um, it's a product of its time. But like the just the the idea of the idea of an insurance adjuster going around following a basically what's considered <laughs> a super villain to everybody as he's yeah. dist- as you know he's being blamed for destroying like you know, t- cities and all this. And there's this insurance adjuster just following around his trail of, uh, yeah. of disaster uh, yeah. is hilarious. And to turn it into this investigative journalist, not as good. I like the conceit that a guy is so destructive. He has his own insurance adjuster. Like, I wish I'd come up with that idea. That's golden. <laughs> How do you guys feel about rope? Now this name is actually the character's name. I'm not making this up. It's Roberto De Niro. 
<laughs> or yeah. as uh, the what the water boy would say, Roboito. Roboito <laughs> De Niro. What do you think yeah. of Roberto De Niro instead of Millie? Because I liked Millie. And and that's the big omission that yeah. catches my attention so far. Yeah. I, I don't know this, this De Niro guy yet, but I like this Millie. Is the, this is the fan rage that's raging like an intense fire across the interwebs. And, you know, uh, Millie was a pretty cool female character. Very atypical shonen yeah. female. You know what I mean? She was not eye candy she i mean she could be eye candy there's nothing wrong with it but i'm just saying she wasn't played that way she had a, mm-hmm. a a stronger build you know like a more powerful build than than your typical sort of pixie girl or whatever i like millie the good news is there's always the possibility millie could show up later on right like just because right. she wasn't in the first episode doesn't mean she might not be there soon yeah a few times i really thought that i was really hoping that uh, the character we eventually meet uh, rosa was her uh, she kind of looks similar she's tall enough but didn't didn't happen that way. Oh, and uh, I was thinking going back to to Meryl. You know, in the in the manga, they they immediately say that they can't the insurance thing. They immediately throw that out the window in the manga. So I'm assuming maybe they were thinking with this show, they just throw it out the window as it did then. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts about Rob- Roberto De Niro, Chris versus Millie? Um, yeah, no, I, I'd rather have Millie, but also maybe, uh, you know, I was kind of waiting for Andy Pacino. Like I was waiting for him to show up. Too, so. <laughs> hey, there's next episode, you know, yeah, and, there's still time. <laughs> and then we I can think, get, uh, uh, isn't there a Garcia guy out there too? That's uh, kind of in that. I think, I think Roberto is uh, giving is Roberto is training Meryl for how she eventually uh, interacts with Vash because you see they have that contentious relationship that Vash and Meryl had in the original anime. Oh yeah, I uh, I do like that, and I think we could still get to that point. They name dropped Millions Knives at the end of the episode, and he said, "I'm uh, it's the, not only is it the only person I'm afraid of, it is my brother." So once again, one less mystery box. So I think they're going to double yeah. down on the action and the movement and i think they're gonna have to come up with a little bit of a new angle for what what bash is going to do for us in whatever course this series runs yeah that was a bit much i thought dropping him immediately telling these people he just met about his brother yeah that was one i really like i felt special i was like aha i know who millions knives is and they don't then he told him and now i'm not special anymore (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I guess I, I kind of look at this. Whenever you're going to do something like this, you need to make sure that it's a little different. Because if they just went out and just put out a exact shot for shot CGI remake, people would be like, "What's the point?" So, yeah, I mean, right. I guess going into something like this, you're always kind of expecting a little bit of a change. It's just, do people like the changes they make? And not always, right? I was still hoping they would give us Millions Knives Chow. Let two of my favorite comic books come <laughs> together. You know, a Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> were you guys impressed with Vash's heroic feat this episode? Like, cause you watch it. This is the first episode. Vash really has like, if you're a newbie in particular, Vash really has to catch your attention here when yeah. he needs a bullet, gets the bullet, chases the bullet around, shoots the thing and fragments it and, and protects everybody from the cluster bomb. Mm-hmm. That was the moment I was waiting for. I, I was, was watching this episode, waiting for the heroic feat. Yeah. The heroic feat worked for me, and then I was on board because I felt like, okay, I can get to know this Vash. How about you guys? It was also the best animation in the whole episode there. Yeah, of course. I mean, you could tell that was their money shot. They put all their effort into that. They knew that was going to win over. Yeah, definitely. That The animation for that scene, that part was top-notch. Like, it, you know, it, it was really, really good. I mean, you got to remember, <laughs> you got to win over the crusty guys, because if you were 25 when Vash came out, you know, when Trigun came out, you're 50 <laughs> now, so you're going to be hard to win yeah. over. Now, yeah. I un- I understand why Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was made. I understood the need to go back and give that story a proper treatment, the way that the anime got ahead of the manga, then the manga ended differently, etc. Yep. Did Trigun need the Brotherhood treatment? Because I feel like the first series did a pretty darn good job of getting it right. If you ask, well, it's, if you ask any, if you ask anybody who loves it as much as I do, they definitely did. I know there are a lot of people out there. I think it's pretty, uh, pretty. A lot of people think yes, they should have done that. That's why they're so mad that they didn't. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what about you, Chris? Do you think it needed the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood treatment? 
Well, I mean, I think Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is stands on its own of needing a <laughs> needing a redo of. I don't. It, there's very few things that probably needed a redo more than that, uh, <laughs> just because of how the Full Metal Alchemist was right. And so when they needed when they decided to redo that, that was doing a ton of justice. Like it was, it, it turned something that ended up terrible into something that was one of the top animes on any list that anybody puts out. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so, it's number one on so many lists. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's at that level <laughs> and, you know, as somebody who didn't read the, read the, the manga and have as much of a, uh, a knowledge of it, you know, it seemed like it was good, you know, like it, it was an okay ending, but was it, it obviously, you know, if you've had a more deeper knowledge, more than just watching it, you know, it obviously could have used one <laughs> because yeah. there's plenty of comments out there on the internet and not just Matthew, right? Like there's yeah, plenty yeah. of comments out there of people saying like, they're happy they were be well, who knows if they'll still be happy, but they were happy that they were redoing it. Right. So, yeah then less happy that it wasn't following the manga. And then I I've, I've come to terms with it. I might have to go back and reread my omnibus now. So sometimes it can be tough to judge with only one episode, but I'm just going to go ahead and ask you guys, what do you think, Chris? Uh, once I kind of got past the CG, I mean, um, not that it's bad, right? But just that, you know, I love it. I just, I, any anime from that style, when everybody looks like twigs, like walking stick men with giant spiky hair. And I just like, when you change that up, like if somebody right now came and redid gun sword, I would cry. And I would, I would start an internet petition because I'd be like, do not, unless you're going to make them basically human spiders. Like I don't want, I don't want it done. Um, but, but, you know, so once I got past that, yeah, like I think, and, you know, if they keep it more, I'm always a big fan of keeping it to the source material. So if the source, if this is going to stay closer to the source material, then, hey, I'm sure it'll be really, really good. I, I'm never going to be, I, I just, I like to see the mangaka's work actually be on the screen as opposed to what somebody decided to make changes to it just because they thought it would be better. Um, so so if they stick to what the actual manga is, I'm sure it'll be good. I enjoyed the first episode. I uh, just miss the spindly bodies. That's that's all. <laughs> this is how I'll know that they've succeeded with this show. I will cry like a lot. The Trigon manga just makes me cry a lot and I love it. Well, <laughs> if by the last episode of the season you haven't cried yet, I'll send you a box of onions. You can chop them up. We'll get some tears yeah. out of you. Okay? If, if all of a sudden there's an uptick, uptick in Amazon purchases of Kleenex, we know what's happened. It's I'm good. gonna, I'm gonna make that a new question now for every episode as we review it to ask Matthew, did you cry this episode? Because, because once you cry, I'll ring a bell or something. All right. All right. Well, I, I did tear up a little bit seeing. Oh, Rim. you've already cried. Uh, just a little, <laughs> tiny little bit, a little bit of water welling up in this eye over here when Rim and Knives and Vast run screen because. Oh, right the at voice, the very the, beginning. The, right. <laughs> the, this okay. This You're is a pushover. Not, you couldn't make it ten this, minutes without crying. <laughs> this is this is not the this is not the show's doing. Really, it's my connection to the characters from the other it's medium. Like it just shows up and you're crying. It's like the the opening I, I, title comes on the screen. You, and tears. The, why there are there are a few things in this world that I love as much as the non traditional family. And yeah. this one breaks my heart every time. <laughs> so do you think this show works for newbies or does it just thrive on nostalgia? Cause I'm feeling a whole lot of nostalgia fuel. I can't see it through a newbie's eyes. I don't know what you guys think. Well, I mean, if you've never, if you've never watched it, then it's, you know, and, and a lot, let's be honest, a lot of the audience now, a lot of the anime, you know, fandom now, wasn't even alive <laughs> when this came yeah. out, right? That's true. Uh, so That's true. you know they've they've got new ones. They've got you know like new shows that are their you know their bible, right? Um, yeah. So uh, I think that uh, yeah, I think definitely a newbie could walk into this and pick it up and love it. Um, I, okay, and, and then, and then to hear from newbies. I feel like out. they would then turn around and go back, maybe, and watch the original one and go, "Whoa, like this is maybe. 
this is a little different, right? <laughs> but you know, if they really like that new one. But I, I think, yeah, I, I feel like yeah, something like this, you could easily walk into it. I, I have and, perused a few forums where new where people who have never seen the original say this was pretty good. Good. Well, I think it's time to wrap this up. We're going to come back and review every other episode. This one's going to feel a little different than the other reviews because we just had to like set the table and get a lot out of our system and do comparing this to that. Starting next week, I think we'll be doing a lot more of like focusing and breaking down the episode, you know, beat by beat and that kind of thing. So please stick with us. But we wanted you to get to know us. We were so excited. We just wanted to talk about it. And with that, I'm going to say I'm proud of you for watching anime and I'll talk to you again soon. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. It really means a lot to me. If you might be interested in Patreon perks like early access to videos, uncut reaction videos, ad-free videos, and the opportunity to vote on which anime will be covered in the future, then click on the link in the video description. Thank you.